Hello everyone, in this video we will briefly see about how to design gravity dam. As all of you know, gravity dam is nothing but a dam which stands due to its own self weight. So all of you know if a dam is like this, the water level is here. So lot of water is stored on the upstream of the side and this is called the reservoir. And this is the overflow portion of the dam. If at all there is water which goes above the reservoir level, then some water overflows. So this is the overflow section of the gravity dam and there are arrangements to dissipate the energy because this will come with high energy. So the major thing what the gravity dam is, it resists various forces due to the uh, by its own self weight. So the major force comes from the horizontal water pressure. If suppose this is the head, horizontal water pressure acts in this direction. I will just draw the gravity dam. So ideally this portion should be like this but here some width is provided so that some roadway can be provided. That's why there is a crest kind of thing here and other than that it is something like this and here sometimes you will have inclined portion otherwise it is straight. So this is one, this is the section of the dam. So it will, if you see in 3D it will be throughout something like this. It will be throughout the length of the or width of the reservoir and this there will be different sections. This is one section, this is the second section and third section and so on. So each of the section is like some cantilever. You know cantilever here rests only on the foundation but here it is not supported by any force and this goes on throughout. So this cantilever if water acts like this, the force has a moment which will try to overturn the dam and that should be resisted. So because of this, there is tensile stress on the upstream and compressive stress on the downstream. We will not go too much detail, but suppose here water is there and this is the water level. You will have forces acting in the horizontal direction which varies from which varies with respect to the height and if there is some tail water there will be some small acting in the other direction as well. Usually there is no tail water so the majority of the force trace to overturn the dam. So let us say this is H. So this will be gamma H. So this is the water pressure which is acting all over. So, so the force will be the area of this triangle which is half into h into gamma h. Half into h into gamma h which is gamma h squared by 2. And if you calculate the center of the place where the force will act, it will be at a distance of h by 3. So at a distance of h by 3 from the dam, a force of gamma h squared by 2 will act on the cantilever portion that is on the dam itself. If suppose there is a inclined, if suppose there is an inclined portion as you saw here, there is some vertical force also above the inclined portion of the dam. Now let us see the next one which is uplift. All of you know there is a poor water pressure which is developed due to water seepage which we saw in years. So poor water pressure develops due to the residual head. And this poor water pressure as you can see it varies from gamma h u at this point to gamma h d. h d is the tail water head and this is the upstream water head and if there is an inclined portion and it is hu dash the forces acting at this point will be gamma hu dash to zero. So this is the uplift pressure which is acting in the 
upward direction because there is a pore water pressure developed and if this water pore water pressure is allowed to escape like if you provide some sort of drainage holes here like as you can see from this picture if you provide some drainage holes some of the pressure will be relieved because the some of the water escapes to this and the pore water pressure is re relieved so the uplift won't be linear like this so up to this point where the drainage holes are present it is also called as drainage gallery which release the uplift by draining of the seepage water as you saw here so there will be a steep decrease till here and then you will again have linearly so at this point the pressure acting will be gamma into hd that is tail water head plus hu minus hd by 3 here it is gamma hd and here it is gamma hu and if you want to calculate any force it will be the area under this portion and if suppose there is a crack in the base of the dam it will be gamma hu till there is a crack at the base i mean how however long it is so it will be the gamma hu throughout and then it will linearly decrease up to gamma hd now let us solve one simple problem which came in gate exam so here they have given some drain holes also and they are asking the uplift force per unit length for the full portion pq and the head of water they have given as 65 meters and hd is equal to 5 meter this is 10 meters and this is 40 meters as you know it varies up to drainage hole it varies steeply then it varies lin linearly so this will be gamma hd let us assume gamma they have told it is 10 kilo newton per meter cube so 10 into 5 which is 50 kilo newton per meter cube into meter 5 meters which is 50 kilo newton per meter square and this point is gamma hu which is equal to 65 into 10 which is 650 kilo newton per meter square and at this point you know it is gamma into hd plus hu minus hd by 3 which is equal to 10 into 5 it is 5 here then it is 65 minus 5 by 3 so this is 25 into 10 which will be 250 kilo newton per meter square so at this point it is 250 kilo newton per meter square so they are asking the uplift force per unit length for pq so it is this whole area you know this is 10 meter and this is 40 meter now let us divide this into rectangles and triangles so this triangle portion it is nothing but half into 650 minus 250 this portion is here it is 650 here it is 250 so it is nothing but half into 650 minus 250 into base so that is the triangle formula plus rectangle 10 into 250 till here it is 250 this is 650 plus 10 into 250 and similarly the rectangle here it is 40 into 50 till here it is only 50 40 into 50 plus similarly again half into so this point is 250 and this is 50 so this portion is 250 minus 50 into base which is 40 so what i am trying to do is i am just calculating this whole area based on the distances and lengths we have 
so this portion will be 4500 this portion will be 6500 6000 sorry so it is 10500 kilo newton per meter will be the uplift force per unit length of the dam now let us see about the stability requirements as you know if this is the dam there is a horizontal force due to water pressure and there will be other forces also then you have the weight of the dam and other vertical forces then you have some uplift and when there is a horizontal force obviously some frictional force tries to resist it so for overturning we will calculate the factor of safety fs is factor of safety that is nothing but this is overturning moment and then you have a stabilizing moment so factor of safety is nothing but which opposes the overturning moment stabilizing moment by overturning moment this should be greater than 1.5 for overturning stability and for sliding stability again you will calculate the factor of safety as it is so there will be vertical forces which is w minus u mostly which is represented as sigma pv and horizontal forces you represent them as sigma ph or something So this will be the factor of safety again there should be a good factor of safety and there is some other term known as sliding factor which is tan theta which is nothing but sigma ph by sigma pv and for larger dam the shear strength of joints is also considered so it the equation will be modified as nu into sigma pv plus some shear force due to joints by sigma ph so that's how sliding is resisted so the major forces which act on the dam are the weight of the dam uplift and water pressure and apart from these there are other forces also which happen rarely and sometimes they are considered also they are the force due to the waves formed another is temperature stresses due to variation temperatures and then there is silt pressure and then you have seismic forces which there is some inertia due to earthquake which tries to rupture the floor and then there is also pressure due to wind so we saw briefly about how to design a gravity dam thanks guys for watching the video